The views expressed in this podcast are solely those of the speaker and do not necessarily represent the opinions of the Consumer Healthcare Products Association. Advertising as we know it, it isn't enough and has evolved. The mass marketing approach has changed and now influencers are playing a much greater role in building brand loyalty and credibility. Today, we talk to someone who specializes in the healthcare space and offers parents in particular advice that they are looking for. Let's talk about influencers and how they could help build your brand. Welcome to Chippa Chat, conversations in the consumer healthcare industry with Anita Brickman. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Chippa Chat. Today, we're talking about social media influencers. When you hear that term, do you think about the celebrities and fashionistas who are all the rage on YouTube and TikTok? Yep, those are influencers with major followings, especially with teens. During the pandemic, a new type of influencer has gained growing popularity, the medfluencer. Healthcare providers with their own dedicated followers who want to take care of themselves and their families better with the advice of somebody they trust. These influencers can also serve as a powerful marketing force for consumer healthcare product companies. Joining me to talk about this is Dr. Katie Friedman, who along with her sisters has created Forever Freckled. We're going to talk about what Forever Freckled means. Dr. Katie is an emergency pediatrician who also serves as an advisor for the CHPA Educational Foundation and Know Your OTCs. Dr. Katie, welcome. Thank you so much, Anita, for having me. I'm excited about today's podcast. So first of all, Dr. Katie, let's talk a little bit about you and your sisters and what Forever Freckled is. Sure. So you know, when I started having children, my my sisters having started ch- having children, and we got a lot of pets. As a pediatrician, the, my friends and family around us started calling us and texting us, "What is this rash? How do I feed the? How do I treat this fever? How do I crate train? What's the best breastfeeding products?" And we realized that there was a real need for information out there for new moms, existing moms that are bringing new babies into the home, pet owners. And I am a a board certified pediatrician. I work in the emergency room. So I love to talk about safety, safety, and obviously health. And then my twin sister is a veterinarian. So, you know, she likes to talk obviously about, I just got a puppy. So talk about puppy care, you know, um, diet, um, exercise, really important information. So we're like, so along with my, my third sister we created an all-encompass website where you can go it's like a one-stop shop for parents and pet lovers to get medical advice for their kids their pets and be able to shop products the newest products out there the latest fashion affordable fashion my little sister does affordable fashion and it's really just a place to get to know us as sisters and follow our stories on instagram um our sisterhood and our family and our all of our kids and our pets and our craziness and our travel but really important, the, the root of it is, is it to have a resource, to have a pediatrician and a veterinarian that can provide sound medical advice. And why are you forever freckled? Because we're all freckled and redheaded. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. What a great name. All right. So, but then, so here you are. What made you decide to go into the influencer space? You said you were getting all of these kind of like from friends and family, these questions How did you decide to take this to this next level of becoming an influencer? And maybe in that answer, tell us what that actually means. You know, it it kind of sounds like, you know, the reality is, is we started as a hobby. You know, I saw there was a need. We, we, we put up a WordPress, a very small um, website and just started writing articles based upon the questions that we were getting. What is hand, foot, and mouth disease? I think that was the first thing I wrote um, because that name sounds so scary, but in reality, it's just a viral process. Um, and what ended up happening is as parents discovered us and started following us on Instagram, we became a resource for them. Um, and we were able to grow um, our audience space. And over the past few years, we have done a lot of work, not only on our platforms, on our social media, we, we, we're pretty strong in, in Instagram and on Pinterest um, and Facebook, but we've been able to really provide other companies 
with important content and information for their websites as well. So a lot of the work that we do is we'll do lives, we'll do webinars, we do Q&A sessions so that we can provide in community base for our partners as well as ourselves. So we one thing that I've heard kind of tossed around, mega influencer, macro influencer, micro or nano, this seems like something that should be like in the computer world, not in influencers. But how do these differ in the audiences you reach? Sure. So a macro influencer is someone that has a very large audience base. Um, you know, a million- Would that be like the Kardashians? Well, there would be the, the pinnacle of micro. They'd be more like celebrity. But there's a lot of influencers per se that have, you know, a million followers or, you know, two million followers, over 500,000 followers, and they are considered to have a larger audience base. But really what's also been becoming popular is a micro influencer, which actually has a smaller um, audience base. So like between 20,000 and let's say 150,000, but it's a very engaged audience. So I know you had mentioned in the intro, like there's an influencer for everything right now. So like if you're home decor, there's an influencer. If you're a mommy blogger, there's an influencer. There's food bloggers. So these micro influencers really hold on to a, a small but very engaged audience. And they're coming for specific information. So let's just take a food blogger, for instance. They're coming to get information about food. So they're very engaged in that particular influencer. They, they respect and trust that influencer. And um, those micro influencers have become pretty um, valuable in marketing. Um, it's a, it's a, a new trend in the marketing world is, is really reaching more, maybe to a more micro influencer than one macro influencer. So when we talk about the companies who are CHPA members, would they want to be looking more at these micro influencers with these dedicated audiences who are interested maybe in self-care or what to do with their kids, et cetera? Does that seem like the best route for them to take? So I think it's important to, I mean, at least with my partners is set out your goals, right? So if you're looking for like just rope exposure and you want just people to see the product and know the product, you know, maybe in your marketing strategy, you are, are going to pick a macro influencer that has a very, very large audience. Maybe you're looking for like high turnover engagement. Um, because, and then you pick a smaller audience of, let's say it's a gardening tool and maybe it's a gardening influencer. And that person is going to have a lot of influence on those people because they're coming specifically for that topic and those recommendations. So it really depends upon what your ultimate goal is, goal is and, um, and, and trying to serve those goals. Are you trying to community base? And that's, something that at least for me in the last year or so with COVID, I have found that a lot of people are reaching out to me specifically um, because a lot of things that we were able to go to, a mommy and me class, a lactation class, a CPR class, a, um, you know, a pet training, a pet trainer or a pet class is not available. So a lot of people are utilizing this time frame to bring everything online and provide virtual classes. Now Clubhouse has become a very popular um, platform that people are utilizing to kind of talk about and um, do a mommy and me class. So what has been happening for me is they will pair me. I'm considered a micro influencer. So my moms, I have a smaller audience base. I mean, it's 50,000 people, but, um, but they come to me specifically for pediatric advice. Um, they will pair me, which is a interesting and, and I think a very effective tactic, is they'll pair me with someone that is a macro influencer that has a lot of a larger audience and will sit and chat about whatever it is that product like um, vitamin supplementation. And we'll talk about newborn care and what vitamins your newborn should be start on, you know, what to, to what you need to initiate in the newborn phase as, as, start, as far as vitamin supplementation. Um, and that becomes really powerful because, you know, in this space, I think that people are really longing for education um, because there's so many influencers out there and because it's, you know, relatively saturated a stagnant picture um, on a post with a product. It's not that it doesn't do well, but there's a lot more value in what content that person is creating for you. It's very important now. And the trend is, 
is your is your um, picture being saved? Is it being shared? And so when you talk about the content you want to create, is it saveable content? And is it cut content that you can then repurpose for your own company, right? So if it's a small reel that I'm doing for, um, let's say, acetaminophen or or um, or ibuprofen, maybe it's the instead of just talking about acetaminophen, maybe it's a 30 second reel on fever control. Do you want to get your your child's fever under control? Here are three quick tips that you need to know. And then not only do I say that, not only do I utilize that for my platform, and so my audience base gets to see those important tips and learn what fever reducing medication is, but then also that company can use a lot, utilize it on their on their website and their social media, and it becomes important for them as well. And that's what's nice about having content that is shareable and um, savable and content that's kind of what I call like dense education versus kind of just like, this is the best fever reducing medication out there. But why? We want to know why. Like as parents, I think that there's just this need to understand what it is and why and what can I learn from this person. So Dr. Kitty, I love what you said about providing additional tips and information around any product you're talking about. How do you maintain credibility as a pediatrician, even when you might be endorsing a product? Um, It sounds like you do that by giving a lot of extra information that you personally believe in and that you would tell your own patients whether your audience chooses to buy the product or not. Sure. So that's it's such a great question. So two things. One, we're very picky about who we choose to work with. When a company comes to us and wants to partner with us, it's really when we choose to work with a company, it's a company that has the same mission that we have, the same messaging that we have. And when we approach a campaign or we can put we we start to content plan, I always look at the product before I even sign with the partner and say, what can I teach my audience about this particular topic? So maybe, for instance, we'll, we'll stay with the fever-reducing medication because I, we've already kind of talked about that in the past. What can I teach my audience base? What is my audience base and what are they looking for? So I'll say, what is considered a fever? A lot of parents don't know what's considered a fever. They think 98.9 is a fever when in reality it's 100.4. You know, what do I need to know? Uh, like, how do I, how, we'll talk about what are the common mistakes parents make with food fever reducing medications. They don't give enough. They, they don't know how to alternate with, with uh, acetaminophen and ibuprofen. So we talk about tips that are in that arena. And I'm always thinking to myself, what can I teach my audience or their audience space with this particular product? Because I feel that in this world, you know, nobody wants a product kind of like, I like to say, like shoved down their throat. Nobody, like we want to learn, like it's way more productive. And I feel people trust that influencer more when they feel like it's an organic flow and a um, content that kind of feels evergreen and something that they're taking away. And then in that content, I'll give them my top favorite, you know, fever reducing medications. Or maybe I say as a pediatrician, these are the top things I need in my medicine. You need in your medicine cabinet or the five things you have to have on your, you know, your diaper in your diaper bag. And so we make it a topic that's very appealing to a, a new mom or a parent. And we do it in a way that they're gaining a lot of information they're feeling, they're trusting the information that's coming in because it is information that I really take time and effort into writing. And then they're more willing, I think, to buy that product because of the content that's being put out there. And that's kind of what we go, what we're going back to, Anita, what I'm saying with kind of the trend of influencing is what is the content that's being produced? It's not really about the picture with the stagnant picture with the influencer, but rather what is this, you know, what is this providing for the person that's watching it or the person that's reading it? And then the other thing I would say to manufacturers is, you know, depending upon what your goal is, go out and find that influencer that you think is a great fit, right? Like if, if there's something in specific that you're selling, Go find that influencer that really is creating great content in that space. Maybe it's a creative reel. Maybe it's a TikTok video. Maybe it's a live that you want to do with them. Maybe it's a clubhouse, um, you know, event that 
um, we're talking about maybe you're a diaper rash cream and we're going to talk about diaper rash and newborn rashes and you're creating content around that. And that becomes the focus of the content. So three tips on diaper rash that you need to know. And so you're, you're, you're obviously still promoting the product and that's the first, that's the most important priority of all these campaigns, but you're, you're giving information that some, oh my gosh, I love that tip about, you know, I didn't know this about diaper rash and send it to their friend on Instagram or they save it and, and share it with their pregnant, you know, best friends um, that, that just found out that she was pregnant. And, you know, I think that that's really where we're headed right now because these classes and things that we were able to go to before have really, we we realized that a lot of the stuff that we thought we needed to do in house, although I do think that that's really important and has a valid value all in itself, is that we can get a lot of that virtually. That is so exciting to hear. And I think it really does give our manufacturers some ideas about choosing influencers. And again, the power that that can bring um, to their overall marketing strategy. Now, switching gears to the foundation and know your OTCs, clearly we are not a big budget organization with products to sell. We are a nonprofit, the nonprofit arm of the consumer healthcare products industry. And we are all about medicine safety and happier, healthier lives through responsible self-care. Why do you work with us so closely on Know Your OTCs? So I, I, I've been working with Know Your OTCs forever. I always tell my sisters when I have the opportunity to educate parents, on, I'm, in, I'm an emergency room physician. So when I have the opportunity to talk to parents and educate them on prevention and safety, I'm all in. And even you know whether it's a lucrative partnership for me or not, it, my ultimate mission is to be able to help people and to educate people. And what I love about Know Your OTCs is that although I do, you know, promote products, this gives me the opportunity to really just talk about safety and the things that I love. Like we just did a breastfeeding one that, you know, was really fun for me to write because a lot of women suffer with, you know, the the fears of, can I take this medication? When should I take this medication? Is this safe for my baby? And being able to provide that information for people and do it with a company that's whole mission and passion is to teach um, parents and people about the safety of over-the-counter medications, how to administer them, how to save them, how to dispose them was really, it's just an honor. I really enjoy that work. So it's been really, really fun. And I've been working with, with Know Your OTCs forever. It was one of my first contracts that I ever signed. And, you know, I've been working with them continually for years now. Um, it's such a great fit for me. Well, we are not going to let you go. Okay. Got that? (laughs) You're going to have to keep working with us on knowyourotcs.org and to check out some of Dr. Katie's work. It's in the expert article section of knowyourotcs.org. And Dr. Katie, where can people find you and your sisters one more time? And just so that our manufacturers know too, in case I need a pediatrician or, hey, maybe I need a veterinarian as a influencer. How do they find you? Yes. And we do so much great space with lives and Q and A's and Facebook lives. So yes, that would be amazing. I would love to work with the manufacturers, but, um, so you can find us on social media. So our Instagram, we have a pretty big, we, we, um, do a lot of our work on Instagram. So on our Instagram stories, you can really get to know us and our families and that's at forever freckled blog. Um, and then our website is um, www.foreverfreckled.com. And you can check it out and you can see it's like the pediatrician, the veterinarian and the stylist. And it gives you like a little snaps of each of us and our articles fall in those categories. All right. I'm going to have to check this out because, you know, definitely have kids, definitely have a pet and can always use fashion advice. Dr. Katie, thanks for being with us. Um, Thank you so much. It was really a pleasure and I hope everyone has a great week. Thank you for joining us here at Chippa Chat. For more information and to hear our entire catalog of shows, please visit chpa.org. 